Hello and welcome to another Sunday School Lesson Review Broadcast for Sunday, June the 12th, 2022. The lesson review is taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through eight, and it is titled Isaiah's Commission. I am your host, Minister William Gadsden. I greet you in the exalted name of Jesus Christ, because it is Jesus that enables us to get the word of God out to you, the listening public. We originate from the Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church located in the clean Fort Hood, Texas area. Our address is 4201 Zephyr Road, Colleen, Texas, 76543. You can reach us by telephone at area code 254-680-4378. Uh, if you prefer to reach us online, our website is www.greaterpeace.com. You can also communicate with us by email. Our email address is greaterpeacembc at peoplepc.com. Now, we at Greater Peace Missionary Baptist Church provide a variety of services for your Christian growth. A complete schedule of services and activities can be viewed on our website. So please join us in extending God's kingdom here on earth. I am your host, Minister William Gadsden, and I thank God for you supporting this ministry. Now let us pray before beginning our Sunday School lesson. Heavenly Father, as always, I ask that you guide me as I go through this lesson. I'm thankful that you've provided the Holy Spirit to be my guide. And I ask that all of those that are listening in, that they will also ask the Holy Spirit to be with them, to guide them through this lesson. Guide them so that if I say something wrong, they, you can, they realize that they, they could ask you, the Holy Spirit, to correct it. And I know that you would do that. Go with us as we go through the lesson, as I said, Lord, and thank you for being merciful to each and every one of us. I ask a special blessing upon those that are listening, and I thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. In these name, these, these things I pray and ask Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. So, getting with our lesson, our introduction, it says, uh, in this lesson, we see that Isaiah receives a commission to preach the word of God to Judah. Now, Isaiah was troubled because King Uzziah was dead. Uzziah had ruled for 52 years and Judah had prospered during this, his reign. And he had kept all of Judah's enemy at bay, enemies at bay. Someone may be wondering why the death of King Uzziah troubled Isaiah. So much so that he went to the temple to pray for understanding related to the king's death. Isaiah's death was the end of a great period of prosperity for Judah. Isaiah is wondering what will happen to Judah after his death, much like many worry about when a president of the United States changes every four years. Isaiah was considered as the last great king of Judah because during his 52-year reign, Judah did not have to worry about war with the Philistines, the Arabians, and or the Amorites. Ammonites, because Isaiah had control of these enemies. Now, during Isaiah's reign, the southern kingdom was blessed materially with much wealth. Judah was prosperous materially. They had a godly king, but Judah was also a very sinful people, and God was going to punish them, and Isaiah is the one who will deliver his message. Now, the national glory of Israel died also when King Uzziah and uh, when King Uzziah died, that is, and that national glory has never been recovered to this day. Now, Isaiah's sadness concerning Uzziah's, uh, Uzziah's death leads him to the temple at Jerusalem where he prays to God for answers to what will happen to Judah now that the good king is dead. In the earthly temple, God shows him a vision of God's temple in heaven and his throne in heaven also. And he realizes, that is, Isaiah realizes that the true king of Judah is alive and not dead. Now, Isaiah, was, Isaiah was a king, but he was an earthly king and he had a, a limited lifespan. But God is all powerful and he exist throughout eternity. He existed before time and he will stay, he will exist after time. And not, and so when we see these things, we realize that the earthly temple 
basically had lost a king, but God is still on the throne, and he is the ultimate king. Isaiah saw the Lord on his throne, and above his throne he viewed the seraphims around the throne of God. Now, each seraphim had six wings, and they covered their faces with two wings, and they covered their lower body or their feet with two wings, because they were not worthy to look upon the face of the Lord and, uh, and they had two wings that they used to quickly travel to do the will of the Lord. Now, this heavenly vision caused, that Isaiah saw caused Isaiah to realize that the angels in heaven always give honor to and glory to the Lord, unlike his human creation. Isaiah saw in his vision how the seraphims protected the holiness of God and that God was high and lifted up above all kingdoms and creation. But they veiled their faces with two wings because they were not worthy to look upon God on his throne. Isaiah heard the seraphim say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole world is full of his glory and his vision of the Lord in heaven. In his vision of the Lord in heaven. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the temple and the building shook and the incense and a smoke of the adoring prayer uh, filled the temple itself. Now I'm not sure, it doesn't say if this was a vision or if this actually happened. So I, I, have, I have no answers for that. Now the vision, caught, this vision caused Isaiah to see himself as a sinful man. And Isaiah 6, chapter verse 5 says so. And then let's listen to what he says in that verse. He says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Now God is commissioning Isaiah for his service, but Isaiah says, How can I serve such a mighty God? Because he knows that his sinful nature makes him unworthy to serve God. But God's redeeming grace will allow Isaiah to do his will. An angel applies a coal from the incense of the altar to the, to the lips of Isaiah, thus cleansing and equipping him for his grace, for his service, that is. Then Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord ask, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us to deliver the message to the people of Judah. Without hesitation, Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. The Lord had performed three things to convince Isaiah that uh, he is worthy to do his will now. The Lord had caused Isaiah to confess that he is a sinner with unclean lips, but the Lord used coals from the altar to cleanse his unclean lips and thus sanctified Isaiah for his commission to serve the living God. Now, every believer is saved to serve the Lord today, even from the time of conversion, he should be ready to be a witness for God. But note that Isaiah invited, was invited by the query, who will go for us? To which Isaiah replied, here am I, send me. God can use only willing and loving servants, service, servants to do his service. That concludes my introduction. Now let's get into our Sunday school lesson. And that is taken from uh, Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through eight. It's titled Isaiah's Commission. As I said, golden text is taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verse three. And it reads, and one cried unto another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. There are two sections for the lesson. First section being the prophet's vision. I, that's taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. The second one is the prophet's response. That's taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses five through eight. Now let's get started with the prophet's vision. Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses one through four. Verses one and two read, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting up on a throne, high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. 
Now it is, it is said that Uzziah was a good king, but so was David. But David was chastised by God for his sin with Bathsheba. And Uzziah was punished by God for attempting to take over the job of the high priest in the temple. Now because of this, he was struck with leprosy. But he still ruled. He was placed in a separate building from the others, but he ruled till uh, basically still for the next 10 years. So Isaiah realized that Isaiah was a good king, but he also witnessed the majority of Israel turning away from God during this time. They, God had blessed them materially, and they had treated the people wrong, the poor especially. The rich got richer, and they took whatever they had and wouldn't give it to anybody else but themselves. Now, this is probably why he, Isaiah went to the temple to pray to God for, for answers as to what the future held. Isaiah went to the temple in Jerusalem to seek answers. Answers to that Isaiah, Isaiah is dead now, and I know that the people are not serving you. So what's really going to happen, Lord? And God showed him a vision of his throne. He saw a vision of the throne of God. It was high and lifted up above all kingdoms, and his train filled the temple in heaven. He also saw many seraphims. Each one had six wings, and they hovered above the throne of God. The seraphims covered their face and the lower parts of their body because their body and all parts of their body was not worthy to be exposed to the Lord. They covered their faces because they were not worthy to look upon the face of God and the bright colors of his character and they covered their feet on the lower part of their body because they didn't want to expose it to him which was less important. The seraphims other two wings were used to fly here and there to do the bidding of the Lord. So this is what the six wings were for. This verse also provides a historical time marker for God's call to Isaiah. That is, in the year that Isaiah died, is that basically sets a time marker for when uh, these things happen and, how God, and when God told Isaiah this. Now verse three reads, and one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, whenever these angels are in the presence of God, they continually say the words, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of glory. They said these words. Actually, they probably sang these words to indicate the degree of God's holiness. The Moody Bible uh, commentary states, this is not a reference to God's Trinitarian nature. That is the three holies, holy, holy, holy. He says, that's not a, a, a reference to God's Trinitarian nature. The three holies spoken by the angels, according to the Moody Bible commentary is being, is meant to imply the degree of God's holiness. More than one, and it's two, more than two, more and it's a three and probably more than three times. So the description of God's throne and the three repetitions of the word holy is an indication of the separation of God from his creation and indicates that the entire earth is full of his glory and subject to his rule. Now we get to verse four and it reads, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Isaiah said in the temple, observing the vision of God's throne in heaven, and then the post of the temple door and the door post shook that were firmly fixed to the temple. They moved as a voice of the angelic voice, as the voices of the angelic voices of, of angels sang. Now, Matthew Henry states that this violent shaking in the temple was caused by the angelic singing from, the, from heaven and also was a sign of God's wrath against the people and also an indication of the destruction of the temple by the Babylonians in 587 BC and the Romans destruct, destroyed uh, Jerusalem in 70 AD. Now to understand the commission given Isaiah, one must realize that God had already set the punishment for the Southern kingdom of Judah because of the wickedness. And he also commissioned Isaiah and he has commissioned Isaiah that is to deliver the grim news to Israel. The grim news is to deliver, he is to deliver as stated in Isaiah the sixth chapter verses nine through 13. And this is the only message that he is to deliver to Judah 
in some form or another during his entire length of his ministry to Judah. It's a long time to deliver the same message. Now, this is, it says, this is what he says in the uh, sixth chapter, verses nine through 13. And nine, verse nine says, and he said, go and tell this people, be ever hearing, but never understanding, be ever seeing, but never perceiving, make the heart of this, this people callous, make their ears dull and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Then I said, for how long Lord? And he answered until the city is be lie ruined and without habita inhabitants until the house houses are lifted, uh, are left deserted and the fields ruined and ravaged until the Lord has sent everyone far away and the land is utterly forsaken. And though I, uh, and though a 10th remain in the land, I, it will not be laid. It, it will all, it will again be laid waste. But as a terabith and oak leaves stump, when they cut are cut down, so the holy seed will be the stump in the land. Now, if you were to recall, these are the words Jesus told his disciples in Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 10 through 16, when they asked him why he spoke in parables to the people. And this is what Jesus said to the disciples. He said, he replied, but because the knowledge of the, I'll, I'll read, I forgot I didn't read verse 10, so I'll start at verse 10. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? And verse 11 says, he replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whosoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whosoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not hear or understand, in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and turn and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but not did not hear it. So Isaiah is to tell Judah that they have been weighed in the balance of God, God's judgment and found wanting. So God is going to tell them what will happen to them, but they will not listen and will be taken away in captivity and the land will lie in waste. But after 70 years, 10% of the people will return to the land, but they too will experience persecution. Now, this is God's judgment on Judah. This is a message that uh, he commissioned Isaiah to say to Judah. This is the only message, nothing else. And so the people of Judah will be cut down as a tree. But God states that from the stump of the tree, a holy root will grow from this root and will become the everlasting ruler of the world throughout eternity. And this ruler and this Basically, root from that stump is Jesus himself. Now that concludes this sec that section. Let's go to the second section. And that is taken from Isaiah, the sixth chapter, verses five through eight. Verse five reads, then said I, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Now, after Isaiah sees God in his glory and the dedication of the angels to God, he realizes that he is a sinner living among sinners because he and all mankind do not serve God as angels do. Isaiah realizes he has seen the Lord of hosts and he is in awe of how angels serve God. The angels serve God, but God's creation, man, 
who was created in God's own image do not does not serve God the way the angels do. And then in verse six reads, then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. Now seraphim cures Isaiah's sorrow for not being worthy to being a worthy servant when he takes a live coal from the altar and brings it to Isaiah. And verse seven says, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, lo, this has touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sins purged. So that was a reason for placing the live coal, the hot coals upon Isaiah's lips. They say that was that basically his, his iniquity is taken away and his sin is purged. Now he's ready to do the commission God has set him for, set forth for him. Now, the seraphim brings a burning coal to Isaiah and places it upon his mouth and tells him that this hot coal is from the altar of God. And when it touches his lip, his iniquity would be taken away and his sins pur sin purged so he can do the will of God. Now, verse eight reads, also, I heard the voice of, of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. When the calls from the heavenly altar touches his lips, he hears a word. The Lord asks a question that asks, who can I send to tell the news, this news to Judah, this horrible news to Judah? And you can tell it, but they're not going to listen. That's what the word of God says. And it's, and that's actually what happened. It seems that Isaiah answered without hesitation and said, here am I, send me. Now, this is the answer God wanted Isaiah to say. So he commissions Isaiah to deliver his message to Judah. God knows they will not heed the message, but they have fair warning. And uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, also delivered this message to Judah after Isaiah and asked them to repent. And God will cause these evil things not to happen to them. However, they did to Jeremiah just as they did to Isaiah. They did, they did not listen and suffered the things God said would happen to them. And that, my Christian friends, is our Sunday school lesson for this Sunday. I hope something has been said that will take hold and be, a mean, be meaningful for you for this, not necessarily for this week, but for the rest of your life, helping you to grow in the, in the fear and the awe of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us cl close in prayer. Lord, I thank you for being with me as we've gone through the lesson. I thank the Holy Spirit for being with me. I thank you for sending the Holy Spirit, Lord, to be here, to be the one that guides me as I go through each and every day, not just teaching, pre-teaching your word, but learning to understand your ways and to seek out the Holy Spirit for all things that occurs to me, the big things as well as the small things. I'm thankful, Lord, for all that you've done for me. And I ask a special blessing upon each and every one that's listening. And if it be thy will, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.